Cancer's 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we are. It is a Monday night. It is a nine o'clock. It is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and as you can see for the first time in the credits, the ever capable mod master that is Mark. Good evening. Um, it has been the week from hell. Um, last week I had a week off work to uh, to sort of prep for um, for the thing, the big thing that is uh, Vape Fest that is happening this weekend. Um, I know I've sort of touched on the subject a little bit and, and I show you in my first video um, uh, sort of something, um, but I've just give you a, a brief thing. Um, the Children in Need thing that we've been doing is, is running absolutely superbly. Already we are massively over target. Um, there is, I think, touching on £1,700 in there when I initially set a target for 1500 quid. Hopefully this weekend that is going to change and that is going to change dramatically. Um, mainly because I had a little vision um, and, and my vision was that, that there was no way that I was going to turn out enough tips um, between now and, uh, and November to, to sort of get things moving. So decided to give it a little boost. Now that little boost was, was helped very much so um, from a very good friend of mine, Graham, who as you know is, is the man behind Cyan Mods. Um, so I came up with a, with a couple of tips and it was last minute and said, what can you do? Um, I really want to take something to Vape Fest that we can raise some money with. Um, now, obviously, the thing you've got to understand, uh, these have cost me an absolute fortune to get produced. Um, I didn't realise just how much. So, obviously, I've, I've got to take my bit back. Um, but just to go through some of the processes involved, from sort of turning the tip on the lathe, you then have to go through, if you like, a, a sort of a CNC process. And you have to get sort of prototypes made up in, in virtual format to actually get those made. Um, and and when, you know, when they're done, then you finally sort of get to something like this. Now, these only come off the production line in time because Graham had great influence in you know, pushing them through, um, you know, so, so they got there. Um, the input and, and that has been absolutely massive. I couldn't have done this without Graham. So essentially I will be taking a set of uh, these three tips um, to, to Vape Fest and, and a percentage of every one of those sold um, will be going to children in need. Um, as will some other things. Now I have a bag, this is how they come. That's a bag of a hundred tips there. I've got 600 of the things and uh, I'm gonna be selling them in, in sort of bags of, you know, the three sets. Um, I've also got, because Mark has decided to help out as well. Um, and Mark has, has sent me a load of his mod stands um, to take over to uh, to Vape Fest to sell and a, a percentage, obviously a percentage of those will be and over I think this shoulder um, that's why it's been frantic this week. I've been making a load of tin mods and a percentage of every one of those that are sold is also going to go. I'm hoping to, to raise well over a thousand pound to go in that pot um, this weekend. Uh, hopefully. Um, more, more, we'll, we'll do an update as we go. Um, let me slip into our first little vid um, and, uh, and, and we'll get underway. Um, but I would like to say a massive thank you to Graham. Uh, if you'd like to, to bring in a small boy's dream um, to reality and if it wasn't for him they would not have turned up in time um, uh, yeah fantastic looking forward to it right well after all the lathe fixing um, I should be talking to you about my wood um, and I should have been polishing my wood all this week unfortunately I haven't um, it's in the same state it was left last week I have not had the time um, Vape Fest is next week and I had a delivery of my tips, look at those, that I'm making or that have been made and a percentage of those is going to children need and they'll be selling at Vape Fest. I'm really happy with these, they fit very much, that's on the did. Um, so, you know, it's, it's been chaotic, it has been an absolutely chaotic week but um, as well as uh, I'm, I'm sort of making yeah quite a few tin mods to take with me to vape fest um, so this show has suffered it 
it's been a hard week. A very, very, very hard week. So I thought, what I'm going to do, I'm finishing a tin. Um, and some of the sort of tests and, and checks that I go through when I actually put a tin together. Um, I've got some of the pound chop of putty, which is which is not bad stuff to be honest with you. First thing I do when I'm once I've got all my paraphernalia in, I, I test that I've got the uh, display working before I do anything else because there is always a possibility of it shorting um, while you're installing it in the mod. Um, and then just going to sort of position me wires around. So I was going to do a bit of modding while talking and rambling about absolutely nothing. Obviously, um, Vape Fest, like I've said, is coming up. It is next week and it's going to be um, a big one for me um, and all the other guys involved. It's going to be a heavy, full on day. And I've got so many things that, that I'm. I'm putting together, uh, or, or trying to get put together, um, like all the PA stuff, and I've had to, well, I haven't had to, but I've bought new speaker stands um, to make sure that they're safe uh, when they're in the marquee, and all sort of stuff like that. Um, still got to test all those out. I've had a week off work, and I've felt this week like I've worked harder than I've ever worked in my entire life. Um, if you're watching that, boss, don't. At this moment in time, what I'm just doing is is twisting together my posies, and what I'm going to do when I twist them together, let me just bring in a little bit of solder and get those soldered up. So I thought I would sort of take this one a little bit relaxed, um, a break from the wood. I know a few of you have been probably bored with the wood, and I've had some comments in chat about my iTunes, not iTunes, iMovie stuff that, um, not in chat, on, on our YouTube feed, that people don't like the fact that I'm doing promo things in iMovie. Well, what the hell would you expect me to do them in? That's the tool I'm using now. Um, I agree, some of them were templates, and, and that was me having an initial play. But, um, unfortunately, that's the tool I'm using, and uh, and that's the way it's going to be. If you don't like it, sorry, tough. Um, you just get a 510 connection, and we've all seen this before. Um, these these are sort of quite new ones. They they got the little sealedy bit in. Obviously, put that in one of these two dolls. Stick that in there. And I know you've all seen this tin up a uh, an anti connection before but unfortunately and the camera's all over the place I'm up against the wall this weekend I really am up against the wall so the only thing I can do is this film what I'm doing now I've done this 50 times today which isn't that great and the old mines going and everything else. I've watched about five films while I've been doing this. Um, and it's, it's been good fun, but almost suicidal. But well, I'm not, but you know what I mean. I'm just feeding my wires through the hole. Now, hopefully, there's been a few people that have actually asked me how you finish off a tin. And, and you get the out your connections in and all that sort of stuff. I always use a pair of grips for this. It makes it so much easier, so more like, stable, this and the other. Solder it down in on and get your pause. Solder that down in on the AE connection. Like I say, I do apologize if this is rubbish but I have had no time to even look at the wood this way. So hopefully, once that's soldered in, I should be able to pop in two batteries. I only have one. God only knows where the other one went. Over there. And these are my rope yell test batteries. They're good old boys. 
straight away I've got my voltage and again these boards come set at rep well they come set at max voltage so I'm just going to wind that down as I'm going and you'll see it there we go next stage to epoxy I do apologise if today has been a complete and utter waffle, but unfortunately I've had no time whatsoever to film a show and it has been grab a camera and film something. Um, just to talk you through, if you haven't seen this, I'm sure you have, my next step is literally just to epoxy that in and we're all done. And the epoxy that Mark has sort of said that you can get from the pound shop, which is this stuff, go back up. Um, this stuff here, epoxy bonding putty from the pound shop. It is really good stuff to be honest. If you buy this in B&Q, which is one I was normally using, it's about five quid a tube, pound from the pound shop. Get down there, have a go at some of that. Great seal for the AT connection on these. Um, if you notice, then I've got my 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 pink T-shirt as a uh, there's a sort of a cover on the bench purely so I don't scratch your tins because people seem to moan if you scratch your tin. Back to me in the studio um, and hopefully I'll be a bit more relaxed than I was when I was filming this. Talk to you in a bit. As I'm not so subtly hinted at last week, uh, this week I'm going to start working on this DNA 20 mod and the box I've got is one I picked up at Maplands which is this square tube shaped box. Now I've marked out I want the atomizer like basically centrally on the top and the firing switch which is going to be this one is going to sit somewhere about right there. Now for internally what I'm planning is single 18650 battery we held in the holder. I want a USB charging board because I don't want to be opening this up once I've screwed it all together. It's basically going to be a sealed unit. And originally, what I thought is I could orientate it. I'm not sure what this is going to show sideways on like that. But it's a little bit too tight to try and jam it in there. So instead, because I've got the space, I'm going to pop it. at the right end it would help. Pop it down straight through the base flat and then the battery holder is going to sit on top of it basically. It still leaves plenty of room to work with there. And the DNA 20 itself is going to sit this way on in between the edge of the case and the battery holder. With the up and down control buttons which are these two micro switches I'm going to sit above the display along this edge. So when it's done, I'll have a hole cut out so that the display shows through. And two little switches above it to move it up and down. And that's basically going to be it. And because of the type of box I'm using and the way it's going to work, I'm pretty much going to be putting this together outside of the box apart from the connecting up the switch and the atomizer connector. Everything else is going to be wired up outside and then put into the box to seal it. And hopefully this should make a nice neat little box. I just need to be very careful when handling this to make sure I don't break anything. So. First job, I need to position up where I want to be. Basically, that's the position. But what I'm going to use to mark out is the display off the broken one because it'll be a lot easier and I can't break anything. So, what I want is this to sit around about, it comes about 13mm from the top. And about there. So 
so that's going to be the positioning there. I'm just going to mark out the outside edges. Like so, so my two switches are going to sit around about there. Actually, probably close at the edge of the tape, and that will be that. But this display itself is going to be on the inside. I'm not sure how well you can see on the camera, but the display itself is much smaller. So, all I really want to mark out is something like that. That's roundabout where I'm going to be wanting to work to. I said, usually I'll be working on this outside of the box, so the first job I'm actually going to do is to solder up the power supply to the board. So, I've measured out the wires to be the right length. through the holes and solder them in place. to the connector. And we're back in the room once again. So yes, Mark, um, starting on his DNA 20 mod. Um, I, I still, I've got my board here that will go in something um, very, very shortly after after Vape Fest. Um, because obviously yeah, it's going to be a hectic weekend, uh, this weekend. Um, next week, Mark is going to be continuing his, his sort of uh, his DNA 20. Um, I don't think I'm going to get time to sort of film anything. So uh, next week I'm going to be uh, using the little video um, Dave Dawn sent to me uh, talking about tips, um, the one that he was turning. Um, so what I'm going to do is pop into our first little air break. I will pop back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Weber and I Weber Election. Best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iweber.co.uk and iweber-elixir.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-elixir.co.uk. Proud sponsors of webertrails.tv. Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go. There goes ever so quickly, ever, ever so quickly, those those ad breaks. Um, as you probably heard me mention, um, while Mark was soldiering away on his on his DNA 20, I may have, um, I think I worked the lathe a, a little bit too hard um, when it first arrived. Um, mainly because uh, about sort of uh, a week ago, he decided to uh, to give up the the ghost basically, and uh, and it just <laughs> fell to pieces, um, which wasn't a bad thing. Um, I will say the the people that we bought the lathe from um, Amadil were, and I do mention in the little video, were were stunning. Customer service was brilliant. Um, they said I could have sent the head back to uh, to get it repaired. Um, but being a complete and utter donkey, I decided that it would be much better and quicker and this and the other to have a go myself. Um, so I sort of picked up uh, <laughs> where I was trying to put it back together. Um, the one thing this doesn't show was just how difficult it was to bang bearings home. Now, I, I yeah, didn't, didn't realise. The bloke was talking to me about pullers and bearing pullers and I'm going yeah yeah we can do that um, it took my wife uh, my child my next door neighbor um, some people that live around the corner um, some wood um, a little bit of metal some socket wrenches um, and brute force to finally get the bearings in where they should actually go I'm gonna pick up um, where I sort of left off Okay, so basically that is the guts of my lathe. Um, in fact, I have it in bits to repair a few bits and pieces that had gone. And all of these little bits here now are bits that need to go back on. Yes. This is the drawing that I'm currently working to, um, which is where all the little cogs and nuts and bolts go. And essentially, this bit here, this bit here, is out of focus. This is the jobby that's been failing, you have to excuse the camera. Um, and I've had to replace, uh, where is it? This bearing. This bearing had shot, the gear selector had split, um, so I've got currently my head unit, which is here, sort of in a semi-state of repair. So this is the head unit, um, and it yeah, effectively, basically what had gone is, is the, um, the bearing down in there and this gear selector had actually split. Now you've got high-low gear in there. When that's spinning, that's currently in neutral. Whack it in the high gear, and you can see it starts spinning all the shaft and bits and pieces. Back into neutral, and the other way is the low gear that you do to, yeah, have to wiggle with a bit to get it in the low gear. So essentially, what we've done is is replaced um, the bearing in here. But you've got to strip the whole lathe down. To, uh, to to sort of do that. Um, yeah, my fat gut was in the way then. Um, yeah, much fun. So I've still got lots to do. Essentially, what I've got to do now is fit the uh, speed sensor, which gives me the readout on the display on here. I've got a, a top nut to go back on, which secures a whole lot on. Um, I've then got the crank cover to go back on and the drive pulley wheel thing that goes down to the motor. Um, hmm, good fun. And this is currently where the, if you like, the drive end would sit. This is where this bit would sit on here to do the driving. I've then got all the various gears and cogs and everything to set up 
which drives the threading portion here um, all that sort of stuff I will say that the people that we bought this lathe from um, Amadil are stunning their customer service is absolutely stunning without stripping it down I thought one of the gears had gone um, it wasn't a gear it was the bearing they sent me a full set of upgraded bearings um, a new gear selector um, and basically offered me a discount on anything I'm going to be purchasing after this so absolutely cracking customer service I'm going to crack on and get this thing back together um, I'm going to build up the head get the head in um, we then got to put the motor in which goes under here um, mounts in through these two lugs here I've got to get all the wires through um, for the power uh, and then the old other paraphernalia and cogs and stuff that sort of go on um, why do this because this is a modding tool and you know with with the, the thing I've learned about lathe is they do take a lot of maintenance well not a lot of maintenance but you, if you know how to rebuild one and how to take it apart and this that and the other I've learned <laughs> today has been fun um, but if you're going to buy a tool for modding, um, particularly a lathe, I think at some point you're going to have to learn to mod the lathe to make the mods, if you get me. Um, I'll pop back into when I get the headstock back on. Right, so basically I've got my headstock back on um, and that is running well with the, uh, with the drive chain which now needs to go back down to the motor. Um, Apparently the next step is to get the motor installed which lays back under here and bolts through the front. I've then got to run all the cabling through for the power supply that goes up to the drive unit. Um, next step in rebuilding the lathe. Okay. Right, well that's it soldered under the power supply but in my haste I've completely forgotten I need to remove these tabs otherwise I'll never get the batteries in and out. So I'm going to be very careful here. Just to run the knife down. do that on these to make my life a bit easier. So all being well when I pop a battery in here now we should get a display light up. And as you probably can't see, so try zooming this in. There is a working display, although all you'll see probably is flickering because of the way the camera works. And trust me, that's currently set at 9.1 watts apparently. And it's reading in this direction, so when I put it in, it will be, it'll actually be going in this way up going to be upside down but that can be adjusted later with the settings on it so not to worry right we now have a working display at least so next job I need to figure out what else I need to wire up Next thing I want to do is start to drill out pilot holes so I can work out where everything is. So I'll start with the easiest one. That's going to be for the atomizer connector. Let's 
appropriate through for that, and a switch on the side. Now, the switch I'm using is this big one, and that's purely for comfort more than anything else. I could just use three of these micro switches if I wanted to, as all the switching is electronic, there's no load going through any of these, so the rating for the switch is completely irrelevant in this case. But I find this one a very comfortable, reliable switch, so that's what I'll be using for the main fire button, because pressing down on this for any length of time can get a little bit uncomfortable. So, once those two drilled out, now I need to try and drill a hole in the base. This is going to be awkward to judge. Thank you. It's right at the top corner, basically, where I want it. And the second hole close by. Here. So, if I can get it right, you'll be able to see I've got two holes at the top edge of where I want this connector cut out from. And mostly I'm going to just be using a file to file away the edges. Uh, rather than cutting it out. And similarly with this. I want a hole at each edge basically. how it's going to work but if possible I may want to fill this hole in with a piece of clear epoxy, eh, clear, epoxy clear perspex but I shall see how it goes afterwards this may not be possible after all if I, if I can fill that in it would mean that the screen's completely protected then and there's no danger of it getting damaged as usual, I've got my standard setting for this. And that one's done. take that one but I will need to drill it out into a bigger hole. These two, the first one should be a perfect size I think. for this bigger bit. I should be able to take this hole out to a half inch. Which will be that size. And basically that's the holes drilled. Now we've just got some very fine work to do on this side and this end to get them to the right size I need. But I need to clear away this debris first, so I'll be back shortly. And there we go, we are back in the room once again. Um, Mark truly getting to grips with the DNA20 board and I'm definitely going to follow his advice this time, um, which is to, to epoxy that damn little 
thing on there because I think that's going to make such a big difference. Um, Brand, if you're listening, please, why do you do that in the first place? Um, it would make it damn easier. Um, like I said a while ago, I'd like to see that with a clip on and off display and a few different lengths of uh, of ribbon wire, um, so you could put it pretty much where you wanted. I understand the way that you've got it, but all good fun. Um, I'd like to see it definitely with a clip on and off display and longer leads, much you know, much more flexibility. I think they'd be used in a loot move things. Um, what is coming up um, this week? I, I just don't know. As I say, just get there if you can. Um, Frantry on the day is going to be absolutely huge. Vapors from all around the world will be attending. I will be there. Um, I know Andy Sutton is going to be there. He's going to be there with his uh, with his video booth that you can actually go in and, and film a little bit for the Swarf campaign. I'm so tempted to go and moon in that box. I won't, but I am. Sorry, Andy. Um, there's going to be lot. There's a, the roast hog thing. Um, obviously, the big marquee with all the vendors in, meeting lots of people, vaping all day, all that sort of stuff. As well as all of that, there will be RY4 Radio, I believe, doing some sort of uh, live presentation, um, probably from the bar. So lots and lots and lots, um, definitely, definitely, definitely going on uh, that weekend. Um, I will be there, as I said, I will be selling um, a lot of stuff uh, and a lot of it going children need. I will come back to that very, very, very shortly. Let's get into our second, sec is going faster than the fasting tonight. Second let that break, catch you back after this. <laughs> Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Thank <laughs> you. 
Flight Sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we're back in the room once again. And before we crack on with Mark's next little bit um, about his, uh, his DNA mod that he's building, I've got one piece of advice for one of our, our sort of chat members. Lal, you should burn it and claim on the insurance. Job done. Now that I've got the holes either end drilled, I just want to cut out the small bits of plastic. So I'm just going to roughly cut it out with a Dremel to start with. That's pretty much good. It's hard to see. Now I'm left with a small sliver of plastic in the middle. Oh, let's pop that out. And that should give me pretty much the sort of window I'm looking for, I think. slightly wider than what it is now but that's going to come with a fail I think so let's remove the tape so I can get a better look at what's going on and what I'm left with is a rubber fall see it's a little bit shallow at this side and that side so it's Slightly skewed. Should be able to file it away with a nice set of files now. Basically what I want to do is file it so it's level with the end of the circle so it looks like a nicely rounded solid shape. the disc. And that's going to be a long slow process of just gently filing it out but you get the idea. I'll come back when I've finished that bit off. And in the meantime I'm going to want to probably drill another hole in this just trying to work it out so I can get a file inside there. That's basically the simple parts. Right then, after some careful filing away, I've now got something that will allow the USB charger to fit through. I can get hold of it. There that it's flush up against the edge now. I've got a nice, fairly neat hole for the USB charging board. So that'll be good in there. And I've straightened off the edges, carefully filled it away, and hopefully I should be able to this through to give you an idea. Just cut off the wires didn't get in the way. So there, that should give you a rough idea of how it's going to look. As 
zoom out. Oh, it ever so slightly. We'll get rid of some of the light. I think that'll work rather well. Apologies for the zooming in now. So that's pretty much the case modified now. I need to drill a couple of holes for the up and down switch which is going to sit above it. I'm also going to want to add, if at all possible, a piece of clear perspex across this hole. Or insert in this hole even. So I've got a scrap piece. What I want to do if at all possible is just going to be putting it through the hole and just mark out with a pen what I need to cut and then it's going to be a matter of roughly cutting it out trying to file it down to shape that through there I have roughly what I want to work to I need to work to the outer edge rather than the inner edge so I need to cut outside this shape and then gently probably sand it down till it fits in the hole perfectly and then I can use some plastic weld to glue it in place but that's all for next week right so I've got the motor installed back under there now um, fed all my cables through um, I'm working if you can see down here no gear engaged that's running put it in high gear and you can see the motor running so theoretically all should be there I've now got to assemble the um, paraphernalia that, that sort of goes up here somewhere. Um, it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle, this thing. There we go. And you've got to get that on. You've got to stretch this trigger out as you get this on. And then that will do you for your threading. I'm going to only set it in the higher setting, or I have been setting it in the higher setting. And then it is simply a case of a little bolt in here. I know this may not seem relevant, but if you're going to work with tools, you might as well learn how they work and how to fix them. That's my gear selector in. I've next got me drive cog for the gear selector simply snaps in there and you see if you do it in the right order it seems relatively simple he says basically this is side assembly is, is for use for the running the, the lathe automatically and um, for doing the threading don't want to over tighten these it's a card case my next cog that needs to go in is this one down here and that simply slides on he says simply it's never going to be simple is it bit of false I always use a little wooden mallet to drive that home and the right allen key always helps and then my final one which is a pain in the boom to get on so it all working together now nicely just put it into neutral and that shouldn't run is the bottom cog which does need a little bit of assistance so we say to get that on lining it up with a teeth which 
use a little block of wood. In the centre of there. Nothing there. This engage gear. And then this is the final one that drives the uh, shaft for doing the threads. Put it into neutral. Can't find neutral. Neutral. Nothing spins. Oh, good. So that's our, if you like, our side threading assembly done now. And we're pretty much most of the way there. Next bit to do is going to be secure up this back panel, get this in, get the safety switch installed here, which bolts onto the back, and then literally we've got the power supply and bits and pieces to link up and um, test fire it. Thing too. Right, hopefully, some funky stuff now. Got my gears on, got my casing back on, got my cables through. Not sure I said that before. Um, this has taken a long, long time. Totally stripped down the, the full, you know, the head assembly of the lathe and um, put it back together again. And inserted, um, let me show the culprit, because it is literally that, a bearing blue. Um, the guy reckoned it was probably wasn't installed properly from China. Now they did say I could send the whole lot back to have it done, but waiting for the shipping and setting the other would have been a nightmare. Um, and it's 45 quid to ship, so not that good. And this little assembly had split down the middle. Now this is effectively the gear selector. Um, that runs on the cog. There's a little Y-shaped thing on here that goes in there. When you do that, it selects between the high and the low gears. Um, I'm roughly at a stage now where I'm just going to fire it up and see, <laughs> see if it works. Um, so I've got the power unit. I'm just going to literally piece the wires back together sort of before I turn it on just to see what happens. Um, neutrals are tied together on this. There's that one. And the other thing I've done is install this little sensor here. Now this sensor is what picks up on this little cog here and it that gives you the, the variable speed. It picks up on the speed, the rotation of that. Um, let's plug that in. Probably the right way around would help. And hopefully, um, let me plug it in. Power, no bang is good. I've got my safety catch down. I should be able to power this on, which we can see. Hopefully, there we've got some power on. Um, let me just make sure we're in the gear. And as you can see, display is running. Let's power it up. See what happens. <laughs> say jobs are good um, I just now need to bolt that back to the body make sure the cables are out of the way get the end casing back on and we have a working lathe again um, I won't say that's been fun that has been an absolute pain in the ass I thought it might be worth showing you purely because as I say if you're going to work with these things you you've got to expect something like this is, is going to cost a fortune for shipping um, so it's well worth you know learning how to strip them down now we went with this diagram um, which was fun and uh, and of course a couple of YouTube videos that showed you the basics how to get this apart um, all good fun back on with some modding and there we go we're back in the room once again and I know a lot of people would say why show a lathe um, because obviously it is a modding tool and as I said there you know sometimes you have to mod the modding tool um, to, to make it do what you need it to do and this was one of those instances um, what have we got coming up for you this week um, tomorrow night we have vapor scene with Marco followed uh, rapidly by uh, DE talk on Wednesday um, uh, we have um, I think it's something a little bit like this 
Great. Oh, All I can see is Sav. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I talk a lot. I'm sorry. Hello and welcome to the Here's How I Forgot the second half of that sentence. I got out of work. I forgot how to continue. <laughs> yeah, the Here's How sponsored by Sip6. Have we still got viewers? Mm. Yeah, we've got 87 currently watching. I've got 88. Yeah, I've got 88. Yeah, I did. Uh, so not she was not watching that. that. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's right. I was looking for the wrong screen. On Thursday, there is more madness and mayhem because uh, myself and Lewis may not well be around. We are rolling out a huge project in Southampton um, that I may well have to uh, go up to on Thursday. So I don't know what time I'm going to be back. But the team will be here to cover in true fashion as they do. Um, on Friday, obviously, uh, nothing. What's Saturday? Saturday is Vape Fest. Um, there we go. And on Sunday, we'll be back here with Dave Kitson before I depart. I would uh, I would like to show you just a couple of bits again the process that I have gone through with the help of uh, of Graham from Sam Mods who has done an absolutely fantastic job as I said in in making a little boy's dream come to uh, come to fruition um, and uh, and helping me to uh, to produce um, some drip tips that, that I'm going to be selling at Vape Fest um, with a percentage going to uh, to children in need. Um, Obviously, I'd love to put all of it, but they cost an absolute fortune to make um, and uh, and get produced and ship in and import duty and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not looking to, you know, to they will be, let's just say, reasonably, reason, I can't even say it. They'll be well priced on the day. I have bagfuls of the things um, um, to get through. I'm taking uh, some tins down with me. Um, obviously, a percentage of those is going to go to children in need. And Mark, as I've said earlier, has sent me uh, a load of his uh, his mod stands that we'll be selling. And again, a percentage of those will go to children in need. Um, we are hoping on the day at Vapefest to raise in excess of a thousand pound, if if we can, um, for children in need, which will see the total that we've raised so far go in excess of sort of two thousand seven, two thousand eight hundred pounds. And there is still the the big raffle um, that will be going on um, after the fest and and everything settled down, um, broadcast as usual live here on VTDB, um, where everybody will be given a chance to buy some raffle tickets and partake in some some good bits and pieces. I've already got mods coming in left, right, and centre for the raffle. Um, hopefully, it is going to be a very, very, very good prize fund um, i will say if anybody is, is going to vape fest and and get something in the raffle that they don't particularly want and they don't want to sell it on the forums or anything like that look me up um contact me i'll put it in the prize pump you know, the, the pot for the uh, for the children in need raffle um good way of, of recycling your unused bits or juice or anything uh, to go in there um i think we are coming um, to the end of our time tonight. I'll say once again, thank you very, very much uh, for the backing of the team. Um, don't forget to tune in for the rest of this week. Uh, lots of fun and games coming up. I will see you guys um, if you're there on uh, on Saturday. I'll probably be there around about, I, th I think, sort of midday uh, on Friday. Um, setting up the audio, testing out and meeting Wayne and probably getting wasted by 3 p.m. on Friday. Probably. Um, I don't know. Uh, if you are going over there, don't forget beers beforehand on Friday night. Um, there's a very good gathering um, normally in the Tamworth Arms. Um, so all good fun. I will see you um, next week where I will be back with uh, with Dave Dorm's um, turning lessons. So once again, guys, it has been um, absolutely emotional. I will catch you next week or at Vape Fest. Have a good one.
Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.